Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Outraged stems turn on Obama after truth revealed in disturbing pics. He did this against America. Propaganda is the spreading of information in support of a cause. The word propaganda is often used in a negative sense, especially for politicians who make false claims to get elected or spread rumors in an effort to push a particular agenda or get their way. The information is not objective with a primary use to influence an audience often by presenting facts selectively to encourage a particular synthesis or perception or using loaded language to produce an emotional rather than a rational response. It is often associated with material prepared by governments, activist groups, companies, and the media. In recent weeks the American people have been bombarded with massive amounts of propaganda from the weaponized mainstream media in a barrage of heartrending images and sound bites. Much of it has been out of context and some has been outright lies. Photos of a crying little boy in a cage began circulating on social media as another byproduct of the Trump administration's heartless zero-tolerance immigration policy which separates illegal migrant children from their illegal migrant parents at the border. Many of those sharing the picture claim the image depicted a boy detained by ICE under the new Trump administration policy of referring all people who cross the border illegally for criminal prosecution. Among those that shared the photo was journalist and filmmaker José Antonio Vargas. Vargas posted the photo last week on social media platform Twitter with the caption, This is what happens when a government believes people are illegal. Kids in cages. The photo was liked some 38.3k times with more than 30,000 comments on Twitter alone, adding Facebook there were even more. Except as even CNN contends this photo is completely out of context and is not showing what it claims to show. When even fake news CNN calls you out for out of context info, it is an issue of some significance. The picture was actually taken during a June 10th protest conducted by the Brown Berets de Semina Watts Texas chapter against the current White House zero-tolerance immigration policies at Dallas City Hall. Then there is Time magazine cover. Time magazine used a viral image of a sobbing two-year-old Honduran child snapped by Pulitzer Prize-winning photographer John Moore alongside a towering Donald Trump for its Welcome to America cover illustration. The cover seems to ask the question, what sort of country are we as it tries its level best to place blame for America's current immigration policies on all Americans, and more specifically on President Trump himself? Moore told Time of the photograph, this one was tough for me. As soon as it was over, they were put into a van. I had to stop and take deep breaths. All I wanted to do was pick her up. But I couldn't. The little girl is two-year-old Yanel Adonis Hernandez from Puerto Cortes, Honduras. She became the face of the child separation crisis after she was photographed crying in McAllen, Texas, as border control agents searched her mother, Sandra. Time was recently forced to issue a correction to the story calling it misstated. The correction reads at the bottom of their cover story, the original version of this story misstated what happened to the girl in the photo after she taken from the scene. The girl was not carried away screaming by U.S. Border Patrol agents, her mother picked her up and the two were taken away together. Her father, Dennis Javier Varela Hernandez, spoke out after seeing her picture explaining that his wife and daughter were never separated by border control agents and remained together. Two-year-old Yanela, a Honduran asylum seeker, has become the face of the child separation crisis after she was photographed crying in McAllen, Texas, as border control agents searched her mother. Two-year-old Yanela, a Honduran asylum seeker, has become the face of the child separation crisis after she was photographed crying in McAllen, Texas. As border control agents searched her mother, photo credit, Daily Mail. The Daily Mail reports Dash. A spokeswoman for Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, has told DailyMail.com that Sandra had been previously been deported from the U.S. in 2013. The spokeswoman said that she was encountered by immigration officials in Hebronville, Texas in and sent back to Honduras 15 days later under expedited removal. Sandra current immigration proceedings are ongoing and she is being housed at a family detention center in Texas. Dennis said that his wife had previously mentioned her wish to go to the United States for a better future but did not tell him nor any of their family members that she was planning to make the trek. I didn't support it. I asked her, why? Why would she want to put our little girl through that? But it was her decision at the end of the day. He said that Sandra had always wanted to experience the American dream and hoped to find a good job in the States. Dennis, who works as a captain at a port on the coast of Puerto Cortes, explained that things back home were fine but not great, and that his wife was seeking political asylum. He said that Sandra set out on the 1,800-mile journey with the baby girl on June 3, at 6 a.m., 
and he has not heard from her since. I never got the chance to say goodbye to my daughter and now all I can do is wait, he said, adding that he hopes they are either granted political asylum or are sent back home. Above Sandra and little Yanela are seen being detained by U.S. Border Patrol Agenza. I don't have any resentment for my wife, but I do think it was irresponsible of her to take the baby with her in her arms because we don't know what could happen. The couple has three other children, son Wesley, 14, and daughters Cindy, 11, and Brianna, 6. Despite all of that time magazine stood by the broader thrust of their story. The magazine's editor-in-chief Edward Felsenthal states, the June 12 photograph of the two-year-old Honduran girl became the most visible symbol of the ongoing immigration debate in America for a reason. Under the policy enforced by the administration, prior to its reversal this week, those who crossed the border illegally were criminally prosecuted, which in turn resulted in the separation of children and parents. Our cover and our reporting capture the stakes of this moment. White House Press Secretary Sarah Huckabee Sanders even spoke out via Twitter denouncing the blatant bias and out-of-context commentary from Time magazine. It is worth noting Time's publisher, Henry Luce, had a close relationship with the CIA. CIA employees traveled with Time Life credentials as cover in the 1950s. The Luce family financed efforts to kill Fidel Castro. Carl Bernstein wrote, in the 1950s and early 1960s, Time magazine's foreign correspondents attended CIA briefing dinners similar to those the CIA held for CBS and Luce, according to CIA officials, made it a regular practice to brief Dulles or other high agency officials when he returned from his frequent trips abroad. Luce and the men who ran his magazines in the 1950s and 1960s encouraged their foreign correspondents to provide help to the CIA, particularly information that might be useful to the agency for intelligence purposes or recruiting foreigners. Luce is now long gone in time, a formerly staunch Republican periodical during his time now embraces the establishment's shift to progressive politics. It is now the preferred political control mechanism. Other publications have also attempted to portray immigration policies put in place under the Clinton and Bush administrations and implemented and implemented under the Obama administration, as monstrous and cruel by posting photographs from 2014 under the Obama administration. The same news outlets that are now openly accusing President Trump of ripping children from their families and placing them in facilities they likened to concentration camps were oddly silent during the last administration. The following caption photos are from the American Immigration Council. Warning, they are disturbing. A lawsuit filed in 2015, Doe v. Johnson, No. 15-00250, during former President Obama's administration reveals just how appalling the conditions were prior to President Trump. The lawsuit was filed by two women detained in the Tucson Border Patrol Station as well as a Tucson man detained twice in that facility. The complaint alleges that Tucson Sector Border Patrol holds men, women, and children in freezing, overcrowded, and filthy cells for days at a time in violation of the U.S. Constitution and CBP's own policies. Detained individuals are stripped of outer layers of clothing and forced to suffer in brutally cold temperatures, deprived of beds, bedding, and sleep, denied adequate food water, medicine and medical care, and basic sanitation and hygiene items such as soap, sufficient toilet paper, sanitary napkins, diapers, and showers, and held virtually incommunicado in these conditions for days. Yet these are the photos the media is using to depict current conditions. Where was their outrage in 2014 and 2015 when this was happening? That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click, like and subscribe. Thank you.